Did you know that Android 10 has a hidden desktop mode tucked away in the settings? You actually have to look for it and it's kind of weird. I'm gonna show you how to use it next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash HOA. Hello, welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell, and this week I thought I'd take a look at something that might not be fully baked or fully functional for you. Uh, I feel like, let me explain a little bit, I feel like the promise of using your smartphone as a full-fledged desktop computer is something that bubbles up from time to time. Samsung has, of course, banked a lot of their business in the mobile division around their feature called DeX, which turns a Samsung Galaxy device into a desktop environment when you plug it in via HDMI to a monitor with a mouse and a keyboard. You can actually use the phone like a computer, and it's kind of neat. Well, Android 10 has some functionality buried in the settings in the developer options hidden menu that activates a desktop mode, which is very mysterious because Google hasn't really done a whole lot to build this out. It's kind of a mystery why it's there or what the long-term goal is. Is Google going to roll out a full-fledged desktop mode in Android 11, let's say, or even further? I don't know, but we've got some hints to that in Android 10. So I thought I'd take a little bit of time to kind of explore my own curiosity around this desktop mode to see what it's all about and take you along for the ride. And you can do this on your phone too. It's a non-destructive thing. Um, and I'm going to kind of point Point out a few different aspects of desktop mode, but we're going to keep things simple here at first. Let's dive in and take a look at how you find this option and what it can actually do for you. So first things first, desktop mode on Android 10 can be found in that wonderful hidden options menu called developer options. Uh, you unlock this, of course, by tapping build number seven times on your Android device, and it'll open up the developer settings. So scroll all the way down to developer settings once you're in there, and you'll find force desktop mode. So you're going to want to turn this on, but you'll see right above that are also a couple of other features. Uh, enable freeform windows, turn that on. And then finally, I like to enable force activities to be resizable. Now, this can introduce some oddities in certain apps, but it, it aims to make every app resizable in a window, whether developer uh, built that in or not. So activate that. That gives you a little bit more, um, more fluidity and flexibility in the experience. Now, hardware that you're going to use in order to do this, I have this TOTU 11-in-1 USB-C adapter. It currently runs around 43 bucks, uh, But this allows me to go out via HDMI to a second monitor, and this is one of the important things for desktop mode. You need a dongle that will allow you to go out of the phone to a second monitor. This also allows me to plug a keyboard into one of the USB slots, and then I chose to connect an Apple mouse, a wireless Apple mouse, uh, to the phone via Bluetooth. I just had to pair that and boom, I've got all three of these things running in there. And I did restart my phone once I had this all set up because it wasn't appearing. But once I did and I launched into the normal Android home screen, uh, I got the experimental desktop mode on my HDMI monitor. And there it is. Uh, pretty <laughs> bare bones, as you can see. There's a, there's a button for all the apps on the right side. You know, of course, if I tap this, I get a very oddly sorted list of all the apps on this phone, of which there are a lot. Uh, also has a very minimal settings button on the left-hand side, which only adds a shortcut to the screen or changes the wallpaper. I also really noticed that my mouse the the, uh, the uh, sensitivity of the mouse is just way off the charts, and there's no easy way for me to tweak that, but that's okay. Definitely a work in progress. This shows you kind of the beginnings of desktop mode in Android 10. You can see it's super bare bones, uh, not at all useful, really, in this sense. 
This episode of Hands-On Android is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Now, you need to have a VPN when working from home. And I can say with full confidence that ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market. It doesn't log your data, internet speeds are always fast, and it's easy to use. So protect yourself with the VPN that I use and trust. Use my link at expressvpn.com slash HOA today, and you'll get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash HOA. Visit expressvpn.com slash HOA to learn more. Now for a desktop mode with a little more build out, this is where we're going to check out an app, an open source app called Taskbar, which recently upgraded to version 6.0. And this allows for Taskbar now with this new version to be the desktop mode launcher uh, while keeping your favorite phone launcher on the phone. So it's kind of like it splits the, the, the launchers. You've got the launcher on your phone, which in my case is the OnePlus uh, Oxygen OS launcher. And then when I plug my phone into my monitor, it's going to kick into Taskbar as the launcher for the desktop mode. So, but we got to set this up a little bit. So, got to make sure that you've installed the latest version of Taskbar on the phone and go ahead and launch it. And we'll switch over to this desktop mode settings area. And first, enable desktop mode functionality. When you do this, it's going to ask you to grant a few associated permissions. You're going to want to do that for sure. And then uh, you set taskbar as the launcher default. And this is what I was talking about. It sets the launcher default for this desktop mode to taskbar. Set the primary launcher to your favorite phone launcher, whatever it happens to be on your phone. Again, for me, it's Oxygen OS. And then you'll want to be able to maximize the layout once it's up on your monitor. And uh, you definitely want this, otherwise things are super large. So in order to do that, you're gonna need to go back into your developer options menu that we looked at a few minutes ago and find near the top, you'll find an option for enable USB debugging. Go ahead and activate that. And then this is actually gonna allow the computer to talk with the device properly for these next steps. Okay, now back to the taskbar app and go ahead and tap that enable additional settings. And it pulls up a little bit of instructions for you. You're gonna be shown a simple ADB command to grant additional permissions that will allow you to tweak the display density so things look a bit more normal. So go ahead, so we're gonna go, go ahead and do that real quick. You're gonna connect your phone to your PC or your Mac. I'm connecting it to my MacBook Pro, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch Terminal once I've connected the phone to the computer. And then in terminal, I'm gonna to navigate to my platform tools directory. Now I've talked about this in many previous episodes of this show, so go back and check out a previous episode. You'll see how I set this up. Now first, I wanna be sure that my phone is connected properly and that terminal can find it. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in pound slash ADB space devices. When I hit enter, I should see a little code that shows me that my device is plugged in. And so that's good. That gives me confirmation that everything's set up and, and communicating properly. Next, I'm gonna run the command that's shown on the taskbar app. So it gives you a little string, which we can put up on the screen. You can find it on the show page in the show notes. Um, but you're gonna wanna put that in there. You know, you don't have to dig too deep. It's already displayed for you in the app. So just type it in verbatim as it's shown, hit enter, and it's pretty uneventful. Once you hit enter, nothing really happens. It just goes to the, to the command prompt again. But it is done. It has granted those permissions. And now I can unplug the phone from the computer and after we've sent this across, the command is put through. It's kind of uneventful. It doesn't really look like anything much happened, but rest assured that permission now resides on the device. And so we can actually now plug the phone into the HDMI monitor. I'm using my dongle to do that. And once the phone is actually plugged into that HDMI monitor, in the taskbar app, you'll now notice that the display density settings have opened up. And this is really important. This allows you to tweak the size of everything that appears on the HDMI display. Uh, for me, things look best by sticking to the default option, but you can play around with these and see what looks best for your monitor. And we'll take a look at our monitor, and what do you know? There it is. We have a full desktop. 
Everything looks a little bit different. Thankfully, it looks a little bit better. And let's let's kind of take a look through some of the components here. You've got you've got your launcher, of course, on the left hand side. It, it has all the apps listed in alphabetical order. Thankfully, that's better compared to what we saw in the uh, the native desktop mode. You got your status bar on the right hand side, which we didn't have before, so that's nice. Uh, we can actually kind of see things like the time and a few other informational things. Um, you know, we can go ahead and launch a few apps here. And you'll see as I launch some of these apps, things are, you know, sometimes they don't launch necessarily. Some apps like Twitter just completely uh, cancel out. Uh, some apps launch, but they're just, they're just kind of fidgety. Uh, I might be able to resize them, but I might not be able to move them or I can move them, but they, you know, then eventually they pin to the side of the screen. Ultimately, this is just a symptom of the fact that this is not a fully baked out feature and not to mention developers have not created compatibility in their apps to interact with this in an expanded sort of way. Now, in the taskbar settings, you'll also find uh, more settings in there if you want to expand things out. For example, it would allow me to activate widgets on the home screen here. Um, and sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. So it's really a your mileage may vary sort of thing. Uh, but you can play around with it a little bit and kind of get a sense for what a desktop mode, like a native desktop mode might actually be, or what we might actually have if developers take this capability and make their own experience. I could totally see that happening. Um, pretty cool stuff, if not completely usable right now, but definitely worth exploring to kind of see what cool things Android has hidden. So there you have it. Even with taskbar running, uh, desktop mode on Android, at least the desktop mode that's included with Android 10, is pretty bare bones. And even with taskbar running, you can see it's purely experimental. Am I going to actually use this mode and sit down and work in this environment day after day after day? No. And that's probably why Google has not brought this feature into a full mainstream release of Android. Maybe they'll do it in Android 11. I think it's too early to know whether that's part of the goal of Android 11. Maybe it's one of the big features that we'll find out soon enough. But in the meantime, you have some of these pieces to play around with. And thankfully, with the help of apps like Taskbar, uh, it expands it out. Now, Taskbar is a launcher at its core. So there are extra features in there that I did not cover, like icon packs and, and uh, doing some other things. Um, but, you know, it's experimental through and through. So play around with it, see what you think, and we can cross our fingers and see if Google comes out with a more official uh, release uh, around desktop mode on Android going forward. Send me your emails, your questions, anything you got at handsonandroid at twit.tv. You can also find all the ways to subscribe to this show by going to twit.tv slash HOA. There you're going to find links to all the different podcatchers, uh, RSS, uh, you can plug it into any podcatcher that you like, or you can link out to YouTube and find episodes on YouTube. And we hope that you find the way that works for you and subscribe there so you don't have to think about getting these episodes. They just come magically to you. Thank you for watching this week. I'm Jason Howell. We'll see you next time on Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Hey folks, it's Micah Sargent here, co-host of Smart Tech Today right here on twit.tv. Every single week, Matthew Casanelli and I sit down to talk about smart tech for the week. That's right. It can get kind of complicated, but there's a lot of news out there. There's a lot of products to dig through. There are a lot of questions to answer, and we try to do that all every single week. From voice assistants to wearables to smart garage door openers and lights, there's so much to cover and, well, so little time. So be sure to check it out. It's twit.tv slash STT. Huh, that rhymes.